Hello everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video and guide. The production value may not be the highest, but I will make sure to do my very best in order to provide you guys with the best Affliction Warlock Beginner's Guide for Lich King Classic. If you end up enjoying the video, I will make an expert guide to the Affliction spec while I will go in depth with every single little detail there is for you guys to absolutely pump the meters. Before we start, if you have any questions regarding the guide or simply want to hang out, you can find my Discord invite link in the description below or you can simply catch me on twitch.tv slash takenotetv. On my Discord you will also see weekly updates from me, where I release my streaming schedule and you will always know when to find me online. You might be asking yourself, why should you even listen to me and watch my guide, who am I even? So. To start things off, I have played Lich King private servers for the past 9-10 years so I have a lot of experience in my bags. I have basically always been an Affliction Warlock main as it's my favorite spec in Lich King. The reward you get for playing well feels absolutely amazing. I have played at the highest levels on some of the servers I played, always topping the meters even on fights I shouldn't have been. I have been trying to min-max the Affliction spec for as long as I can remember. So every little min maxi thing possible, I probably know it and I will share it with you guys. Lastly, I want to give you guys good and most importantly, reliable information that I myself would want to find in a guide. I will go straight to the point with no BS, hopefully ending up giving you guys a good beginner's guide going into Lich King Classic. So before we get into the guide, here are the 10 pointers I am going to go through in the video. First, we will go into Affliction as an overall spec. What is Affliction all about in Lich King? Then we go into what has changed about Affliction going from TBC into Lich King. After that, we explore the stat priority, the consumables, enchants and gems. We of course also look at my take on the best professions for the Affliction Warlock and races for both Horde and Alliance. After that, we will look at the two different talent builds that I usually use and the glyphs that are simply just mandatory for the spec to absolutely pump. After that, I will show you the Affliction Warlock Biss gear in tier 7 for both Alliance and Horde, since there is one item difference from Horde and Alliance. After covering all the basics, I will introduce you to the Affliction Rotation 101, which includes your opener, rolling your corruption, general information and how to properly use your execute. Yes, you heard that correctly. We now have an execute. To finish things off, I'll give you my Affliction tips and tricks to help you introduce you to the Warlock class. Point number one. Affliction as an overall spec. How do we define Affliction going into Lich King? To sum it up, it's an easy enough spec to learn and just do fine with it. But it's an incredibly hard spec to master. In my opinion, the only spec harder than Affliction Warlock in Lich King is the Feral DPS spec. Affliction becomes the hard aspect though when you have to manage dots on multiple targets once, but this doesn't really become a factor until after tier 7. But don't let that discourage you please. I am here to provide you with good information and help you get started so you can also play this amazing spec. So what is so different from TBC to Lich King regarding the Affliction Warlock that it requires me to make a guide about it? Well hold on to your horses because we have a bunch of changes and I'm going to list the most important ones right here. First off, we will now no longer sacrifice our pets as that talent has been completely removed and we will now no longer have our imp stand in phase shift to buff a little bit of HP and do no damage. What we instead do as Affliction is to use the Fell Hunter as the main pet as it has received some quite massive buffs in the likes of a new ability for more damage, a nice intellect and spirit buff to you and your raid and it has received a 90% reduction to all AoE damage making it lift just about any mechanic in the game. Secondly, there is now the automatic refreshing of dots when it comes to our corruption by the talent Everlasting Affliction. The Affliction Warlock now also has an Execute, or you could say two Executes, one at 35% and one at 25%. Haunt is our new last talent in the Affliction Tree, which is a very, very powerful spell. We will now also have access to Ruin as the Affliction Warlock, even if we go deep Affliction as Ruin has been moved around in the destruction tree making it way easier to get. Spirit will now provide us with spell power through our reworked Fell Armor and the new Life Tap Glyph. We can also make our corruption scale with haste through a new powerful glyph called Quick Decay. Unstable Affliction and Corruption Ticks can now also crit thanks to the new talent in the Affliction tree called Pandemic. Siphon Life as a dot is now gone as well and it is now a passive effect instead that will heal you when your corruption deals damage 
and also provide a little bit more passive damage to your abilities. Spellstone is now no longer equipable in the Wand slot, but is instead used as our weapon consumables instead of using any oil. After all these changes, the best way to sum up what has changed about the Affliction Warlock is that it went from being considered a support spec to being an absolute monster of a DPS spec instead. So, regarding stat priority, it's actually quite straightforward. The most important thing to do is to reach hit cap, which in Lich King is 17%, as when the 1% chance to always miss is no longer in the game like it was in TBC. After hit, our best stat is spell power, followed by haste, crit, spirit because of the new rework of fell armor and the life tap glyph, and then lastly, intellect. So, regarding consumables, enchants and gems, I will show you what is the best and some possible alternatives in certain situations. Firstly, we have our good old food buff. The strongest food buff we can get is from the fish feast which is a feast that can be placed upon the ground and all 25 people in the raid can eat from it. Alternatively, if you struggle to reach the hit cap, you can use Snapper Extreme, which provides a whopping 40 hit rating. When it comes to flasks and elixirs, there isn't really any choice, as we will still just be using the flask. The new Lich King flask for us casters is called Flask of the Frost Worm, which provides us with 125 spell power. Our replacement for the weapon oil in TBC would be our own Grand Spellstone, which provides 60 haste and 1% more damage by our periodic spells. Kipper's Bits are replaced by Spiced Mammoth Treats as our new best pet food buff, providing more strength and more stamina than the Kipper's were doing. For potions we have two choices. Generally speaking you want to pre-pot before the pull happens with a potion of wild magic and then during your execute phase you want to chuck a potion of speed. There are exceptions to be made, as for example when a boss fight becomes too quick and you can now no longer pre-pot and use a pot during the fight, then you don't need to pre-pot anymore and you will instead use your potion during the fight. For enchants it can get a little bit tricky, as almost every single profession has a new enchant for your gear. In this video I have kept it affliction warlock friendly though, and only stated the enchant you should be using regarding to what your best professions actually are. For your head enchant, there isn't really much to debate though, as your new most powerful head enchant is the Arcanum of Burning Mysteries, which is granted by reaching Revered with the Kirin Tor. For your shoulder enchant, your new best is the Greater Inscription of the Storm, which is acquired from reaching Exalted with the Sons of Hodir in the Storm Peaks. If you do decide to roll Inscription though, the, that profession will give you a way better shoulder enchant, but it's not one of your best professions. For Lex, it's quite simple. You'll be using the new Brilliant Spell Thread for maximum pump. We are now giving an enchantment for our belt slot as well, the Eternal Belt Buckle, which allows everyone to add a socket to their belt. For the chest, the highest DPS option is the Major Spirit from TBC. However, if you want to sacrifice a small amount of DPS, you can instead get the new plus 10 all stats for a little bit more stamina. For your bracers, the best enchant is superior spell power for 30 spell power. If you however for some reason decide to roll leatherworking on your warlock, that profession will have a better enchant for you for the bracer slot. For your weapons, the best two enchants depends on what kind of weapon you actually have. If you are using a one-hander, the mighty spell power enchant is the best for you, giving you 63 spell power. If you are however using a two-handed weapon, the greater spell power for staff is your best option, giving you 81 spell power. For the last remaining items, I will assume you have picked maybe engineering and maybe tailoring, as these are very powerful professions for the Affliction Warlock. When it comes to your boots enchant, engineers can now directly tinker nitro boost into your boots, giving you 24 crit rating and a powerful unused rocket boost or speed. If you don't have engineering, then Ice Walker will be your best option. Regarding the cloak, if you pick tailoring, the tailoring enchant will always be the best, even if you have access to the engineering cloak enchant as well. If you pick neither enchanting or engineering, your best cloak enchant will be the greater speed for 23 haste rating. For your gloves, the best option is hyperspeed accelerators giving you a powerful 340 haste for 12 seconds on a 60 second cooldown. 
If you however have not picked engineering, the exceptional spell power for 28 spell power will be your best option. Regarding your gems, it's actually quite straightforward. Your meta gem will always be chaotic skyflare diamond, no question about it. For your red gems, you will be using the runed scarlet ruby for plus 19 spell power, or 3 runed dragon eyes from the jewel crafting pro profession for 39 spell power if you have jewel crafting. For your yellow sockets, the best gems you can use depending on your stat situation and the gem socket bonus is Reckless for spell power and haste, Veiled for spell power hit, or simply just the Rigid for pure hit. Your blue gem will always be the Purified Twilight Opal for spell power and spirit. You will need at least two of these to activate your meta gem. And of course, when Trial of the Crusader comes out, we will have epic versions of all these gems, but not until then. So, we have arrived at the Warlock Affliction Professions. I will assume you want to know what are your best professions as an Affliction Warlock in the PvE content. And first off, I want to introduce to you Engineering. I am a firm believer that Engineering is the best profession possible for Affliction and should always be picked. The reasoning for this is that it will provide you with an absolutely busted glove enchant, the Hyperspeed Accelerators which gives you 340 haste for 12 seconds on a 60 second cooldown. This enchant is so so good as affliction, especially during our execute windows. Secondly, we have our new and improved Nitro Boosts. In Lich King, Nitro Boots are no longer a set of boots on their own. It is now an item enhancement that you can slap onto any pair of boots you wish to. Not only are these boots incredibly handy to get you out of dangerous situations, they can also be provided as a major GPS increase. An example of this could be something as simple as the Saffron Encounter in Axramas. With your Nitro Boost at your hand, you can stand away from the tomb for way longer while you keep doing your DPS rotation and then Nitro Boost behind the tomb at the very last second, barely losing any uptime of your rotation. The third reason for picking engineering is the Springy Akano Weave which is an enhancement to your cloak, providing you with 27 spell power instead of a mere haste enchant to your cloak. Very very powerful. Other than these powerful new enhancements to your gear, you will also gain access to the new bombs and sappers which are just incredible in Lich King, especially the Serenite bombs. Those bombs are no longer on a cast timer and have no internal cooldown so you can easily weave them into your rotation. Other than these powerful enhancements and bombs, you also get access to fun and quality of life items, which is so insane. Uh, to name some, we have the portable mailbox, an auction house in Dalaran, a teleporter to teleport you instantly to any zone in Northland and more. I will always choose this profession, no doubt about it. The second profession I want to introduce to you is jewel crafting. Personally, this is the profession I will be choosing as my second profession, and I will tell you why. Jewel crafting provides you with three Dragon's Eye gems, which is just powerful versions of the normal gems. The Rune Dragon's Eye will give you 39 spell power, which with three gems is an increase of 60 spell power if you compare it to your normal Rune Scarlet Rubies, which only provide 19 spell power. Very, very powerful profession and is completely reliable spell power as well, no RNG involved. The third and only other option in my opinion to be considered is tailoring. Tailoring provides you with a new cloak enhancement which provides 295 spell power for 15 seconds and it's on a 60 second internal cooldown. This is a proc chance enhancement and not an on use. Many people will tell you that tailoring and engineering is the way to go, but I will try to explain as well as I can why I prefer engineering and jewel crafting, even though tailoring is powerful, especially during execute snapshotting. Jewel crafting provides you with a power spike of 60 spell power as described before, and if you are jewel crafting, instead of tailoring, it frees up an enhancement slot on your cloak, making you able to slap your engineering enhancement on it for another 27 spell power. This is now a passive and most importantly reliable plus 87 spell power to your character, which in my opinion outweighs what tailoring has to offer. The reason I think and believe this is that tailoring enchant is fully based on RNG. You will have situations where it doesn't proc for a long time, 
where it procs just as the boss dies, it can proc when you can't even DPS the boss anymore, and when you have forced movement and therefore can't even cast. I do however believe the highest top DPS you can achieve, if all the stars align, is with the tailoring, however, the more reliable and highest average DPS you will output throughout a raid is with engineering and jewel crafting. So, to sum it up, if you are chasing the 99 and 100 parses solely, I would recommend tailoring, but if you're looking for the most consistent overall DPS throughout a raid, I would always prefer jewel crafting. Choosing your best ratio when it comes to Affliction Warlock in PvE is quite simple actually. As Horde, your best and only option for PvE min-maxing is Orc. Orc provides the always powerful Blood Fury for 163 spell power for 15 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown and the passive racial command for 5% more damage for your Fellhunter. It is often asked though just how much of a DPS increase the Orc racials are. According to current sims at the making of this video, in full Beast tier 7 gear, you lose about 80 DPS if you for example pick uh, Undead instead of Orc. As Alliance, it's a little different. You don't have any massively powerful racials when it comes to PvE for the Warlock on the Alliance side. You can choose between Human for 3% more Spirit or the Gnome for 5% more Intellect. Based on my own experience, early in the game Human will be superior as you will be using quite a bit of pieces of gear with Spirit on it. However, when you get into late game like Ice Crown Citadel, you will no longer be using a lot of spirit items which just makes gnomes a little bit more powerful and more valuable over the human race of the PvE as you will now have a lot of intellect and not that much spirit. When it comes to warlock talent builds and glyphs, I personally always prefer to have my dual spec as uh, two different affliction specs, one with pushback protection and one without pushback protection. The reason for this is that in for example Nexramas, there is almost no boss that does pushback to your spells. And then when I actually did arrive at a boss that does a little bit of pushback, I would simply swap into my second talent build with the pushback protection. It is however important to notice in my talent builds that you don't always need the 3 out of 3 suppression for the spell hit. It always depends on your gear situation. So if you have too much hit and you only need 1 out of 3 for example in suppression, Put the points into the important differences that I have in my two talent trees. Which in the pushback protection talent tree could be more pushback protection in the destruction tree or more mana gained when you use life tap. The major glyphs you will use as affliction are not up for debate at all. First off, you will want to use haunt for 3% more damage for your periodic spells. The second major glyph you will use is life tap. For the more spell power every time you use life tap and 40 seconds after using the life tap. The last glyph and probably the strongest of all of them is the glyph of quick decay. So our corruption spell will scale with haste, which means more tick of corruption, which of course means more damage, but it also means more eradication procs, more nightfall procs, etc. etc. It's just so 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 powerful. For your tier 7 best in slot gear as affliction, I have two different sets of gear. We have a horde and an alliance bis, as generally you will have 1% more hit as alliance from being in group with a draenei, which means as horde you will be using the anub 25 man wand as it has hit on it, but if you're alliance you will be instead be using the kill to side 10 man wand, which has no hit on it. Links to the gear sets on your screen will also be in the description of the video below. So. If you're still here and I haven't scared you off, it's time for the Affliction Rotation 101. Now, the Affliction Rotation 101 is not going to be a deep dive into absolutely how to min-max everything. This is going to be a beginner's guide to give you guys an understanding of what we're doing as an Affliction Warlock. If you however like this video, I will pump out another video going in depth with the entire rotation, showing you guys how to min-max everything and achieve the highest DPS in the game. First off. Let me introduce you to our new main damaging abilities that we'll be using as an Affliction Warlock in Lich King. First, we have the one we all already know, Corruption. This ability is now instant cast as baseline instead of needing talent points to achieve this. Our second ability will be our Curse of Agony. We should never need to Curse of Elements anymore, as that will be provided passively by other classes in the expansion. 
Our third ability would be Unstable Affliction. We no longer need to sacrifice this ability in order to reach Ruin and Destruction Chi. What a blessing. Our fourth ability, which is a new one, is Haunt. Haunt provides a 20%, but 23%, if glyphed, damage modifier for our periodic spells on the target, and the spell itself also deals a little bit of damage, incredibly powerful spell, as it also heals us when the effect ends, which is really really good on some boss fights. Our fifth spell is our filler, which is what we always press when everything else is up and going, the good old Shadow Bolt. Our sixth spell, which might look weird to some, is Drain Soul, which is now our new Execute ability. Yes! The Affliction Warlock has an Execute ability. As you can see, it now deals 400% more damage when applied to targets at or below 25% health, which gives the Affliction Warlock the most powerful Execute in the entire game. So, what is our new rotation as Affliction Warlocks in Lich King? After we have done our opener, which I will showcase in a bit, we simply just follow a priority of lists until we reach Execute Phase. Our Corruption is our most important dot and should always be up on the target because it gets reapplied by Everlasting Affliction. Every time we Shadow Bolt, Haunt or use a Drain Spill. Our second most important dot is Unstable Affliction, which also must be kept up, but it is important to never reapply this too early, as quote unquote clipping it before it gets its last tick is a DPS loss. The same rule goes for our third dot, the Curse of Agony. Lastly, we have our Haunt dot, if we may call it a dot, which provides a huge damage boost and must always be kept up on the target. It is however important to remember that Haunt has an 8 second cooldown and the deep of it provides lasts a whopping 12 seconds. So this ability will be ready before you actually need to cast it. Delay it as much as possible while still maintaining the deep of on the target 100% of the time as Shadow Bolt is a more damage per second use casting. When we reach 25% boss health we will switch away from using Shadow Bolt as a filler and instead use Drain Soul as our new filler ability, as is our new execute ability. The important thing to remember about Drain Soul is that it snapshots your current stats when you apply it. So, what does that mean? That means if you have massively powerful trinket procs, engineering gloves and maybe even a potion running, uh, eradication proc, it will receive those buffs for its entire duration. During our execute phase, it is however important to maintain our dots if we can still get a full duration value off of them, while also maintaining our haunt debuff and our shadow embrace stacks on the boss, as Drain Soul massively benefits and does more damage the more dots you have on the target thanks to our talent Soul Siphon. Now, to address what is probably the biggest thing about Affliction, rolling our corruption, if you have never heard about what rolling a corruption is, I will, I will try to explain to you to the best of my ability. So for example, when you cast your corruption onto your target, it will look at what your current crit chance is and if you have any damage percent modifiers active on you at the time. Some examples of damage modifiers like that is, uh, could be tricks of the trade from a rogue. It could also be the death embrace, which is one of the new affliction talents. But there is also certain boss abilities that provides a percentage damage increase, like the Thaddeus Polarity debuff. So let's say you have your 5% crit debuff acts on the target, use the Potion of Mild Magic before the pull for 200 more crit rating, and the rogue used Tricks of the Trade on you on pull. Your corruption will then keep all these extra stats as long as you refresh it with your new talent Everlasting Affliction and don't manually reapply a new corruption to the target. It is an incredibly powerful mechanic and will boost your GPS by a lot if you use it well. Alright, now that we got the corruption rolling, covered what it means, let's look at our opener. Our ideal opener consists of using life tap pre-pull for 40 seconds of more spell power, pre-popping wild magic into casting a shadow bolt into another shadow bolt into a corruption while hopefully we have a rogue who gives us tricks of the trade, an unstable affliction, haunt, curse of agony and then following the normal priority list discussed earlier. Very very nice. So we have our opener, our normal rotation, how to roll our corruption, what are we missing? Ah, of course, 
Let's look at our new execute phase and what it, I like to call execute phase 1 and execute phase 2. Execute phase 1 happens when the target reaches 35% and our talent called death embrace becomes active. All our abilities now do 12% more damage except our corruption. Our corruption does not receive this 12% extra damage unless we manually reapply the spell on the boss again. We have to actually cast the spell again. But we don't want to do that unless the rogue gives us another tricks of the trade or we would simply be overriding a more powerful corruption with a weaker one if we got tricks of the trade on pull. So execute phase 2 where the magic of affliction warlock happens. We can now use Drain Soul and it will do 400% more damage to the target. The best way to utilize this and do the most damage put into a simple matter is to keep up all your debuffs. Though, be warned, I would recommend not applying Agony though if you can't get a full duration out of it, as it does a really low damage at the beginning as it scales up at the end, so don't apply it unless you can't get a full duration. And then use Drain Soul for the damage. The most efficient way to do this is to get a cast bar, either with an add-on or weak aura that will show you when your drain soul ticks for damage. This way, you will never cancel a drain soul too early to reapply your dots and you can instead cancel the drain soul right after a tick has happened to apply the dots instead. It is also important to remember, even if a huge spell power proc, like for example Dying Curse, only have 0.5 seconds left, if you apply Drain Soul before it fades away, the entire cast of Drain Soul will receive the massive spell power bonus, which is a really important factor to utilize for more damage. The Execute phase is also the strongest phase to use our second potion after the pre-pull potion. Now you use a potion of speed for your Drain Soul to get in even more ticks. So we have reached the end of the video where I will provide you with my best affliction tips and tricks going into Lich King. My first tip is to not be discouraged. Affliction might seem like quite the mouthful, but do not worry. The pure fun of playing this spec and being able to be number one on the DPS meters will make up for it. It's an incredibly fun spec once you get the hang of it. Secondly, if you want to get better, watch other people play it. And even better than that, watch your own gameplay. See if you can find out what you're doing wrong. Maybe you're clipping your drain soul, stopping it the cast too early, you know, stuff like that. Just look at your own gameplay and see what might be wrong. Weak auras though, are definitely your best friend when it comes to affliction. Even if you don't like weak auras, they, you gotta get them, you just gotta get them. There is so much to keep track of, whether it's your procs, your cooldown of your procs, your snaps, your ring, the debuff timers, etc, etc. There's so much to keep track of and weak ores are immensely helpful with that. I will be posting all my weak ores and my complete UI in my discord. The UI you might have seen throughout the video is not the final version though, I still have some things to fix but if you see anything you like it will definitely be in my discord. Lastly my biggest tip and trick for being the number one affliction warlock is to play around your procs and don't override your dots. You are playing the master class when it comes to snapshotting your dots and execute with drained soul. Use it to your advantage and never ever override your dots unless you can refresh an agony or unstable affliction at the very very end before a boss would otherwise become untargetable or out of your reach. So yeah guys, there it is. That has been my beginner's guide to the affliction warlock going into Lich King. If you have any questions or simply want to come see some gameplay, don't forget you can join my discord and otherwise catch me on twitch.tv slash technotv. If you guys think it's a good video, I will pr produce a second video where I go in depth with the full min max of the spec, showing every little thing you can do and should be doing to take it to the next level. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll see when my new videos come out. Until then, take care and have an amazing time.